So let me tell you the story of the time that I think, or I assume that I saw a ghost or spirit, demon, whatever, um, when I was at Andrew Jackson's house. So a couple of years ago, this is actually pretty recently. I would say this is probably like three years ago, four years ago, because I just turned 23 a couple of days ago. So I was about 19 years old when this happened. So I used to go to college out at Nashville at this uh, art and graphic design school called Watkins because at the time I was studying film and wanting to be a film editor and director. But obviously that's not where I am now because I wasn't as passionate about it um, as I thought I was. But anyway, that's not the whole point of the story. So anyway, my dad comes down one one day for like a weekend. He, he was on he was there on business at the time. He owned a, a chain of restaurants called the Cajun Steamer. Uh, which was like Cajun food, like jambalaya, Tabasco bacon, crab legs, you know, spicy rice, sp grits, that kind of stuff. It was very, very delicious food. I love history. I'm, I'm a geek in it. I love to write about history in my books. I love to study it. I love classical music. I love his just historical like sea shanties. I just like history, basically. Andrew Jackson's estate was in Nashville. And as you know, Andrew, ja Andrew Jackson was one of the US presidents. Uh, in the uh, er, early 1800s, he was born around like in the, I think he was born in like the 1760s. I'm unsure about that because I don't do a lot of, I don't really care for a lot of American history. I'm, I'm more to like Europe, prone to European history. We go there, I'm like super excited, I'm pumped up. I'm like, fuck yeah, we get to go see Andrew Jackson's house. It's gonna be awesome. And I've never been there before. And I love touring like historical historical sites and buildings and like old forts and museums and stuff like that. We go, we're touring inside the house. It's really, really pretty. You know, with all the, his furniture was there when he was around in that era. He was, you know, um, there was like a violin and a cello and there's a piano. There was like really nice gilded, you know, roofs and angels were carved in the columns on the walls. And it was like a yellow, you know, wallpaper look. Very, very gorgeous house. Um, so we were touring it. We couldn't go into some of the rooms, which sucked because I think it was just like for a private tour. We just did like a public tour, which I fucking hate fucking public tours and like on like historical stuff. I hate that you have to like follow a group and listen to someone talk about shit that you already know. We end up going into the back. My dad in the back there is he was basically he had a slave plantation back then because 17, 1800s slavery was a thing. Um, and so we go there. And it was just its dirt paths going in like multiple directions, left, right, middle. And beyond was like the fucking just like jungle. Like it was just like forests and meadows. And it was very, very thick foliage. That day, it was extremely, extremely fucking hot. Like it was like 98 degrees, humid. It was awful. I was wearing like a shirt and like really baggy jeans and, and like, like some like Converse. So it was, I was sweating up a storm how much sweat I was protruding, I could fucking cause a tsunami. I'm fucking against a huge fucking town. There was a bunch of this old slave houses and stuff where the slaves would stay after they would work during the day and, you know, tend to sugar cane and cotton and stuff like that. So they were kind of like speckled, like peppered around the area a little bit. Um, so my dad decides he has to go to the bathroom or something because he just drank too much water or whatever. And he had to pee. So he goes off to like the public restrooms which is just like, I think a porta potty, which is disgusting. Never go into that shit. Like you can get fucking like STDs. <laughs> I decided to kind of embark on my own, take my little own voyage through the, uh, so to speak, slave plantation of Andrew Jackson. So I'm walking through, everything's normal. There's a bunch of people touring, but the thing was there wasn't as many people in the slave plantation touring it than in the house and like the front gardens and stuff. Cause there, he had like gardens and stuff and he had like a rose and, he had like cherry trees or something like that that people got to look at, which were, it was cool. We, uh, anyway, there wasn't as many people touring it. So I, I went into some of the buildings and, you know, they had old slave tools and like furniture, very, very rudimentary beds and wooden bunks and stuff. It was very sad. I mean, it was very poor living conditions for African-Americans in that time. And it was just very, it was depressing to a degree because I mean, it's, it's just, it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard that to see that that's what, you know, people went through just because of the color of their skin, which was not right. I go through a bunch of these houses and there's like a brick fireplace I saw, there were clay pots, 
There was like hammers and nails and old pickaxes and stuff like that. Really, really cool. There was like old saddles and horseshoes for like, they would, they would back then they would like staple horse, horses nails on the hoof or whatever, which I'm assuming the horse did not care for that because that probably fucking hurt his little footsie. After this, my dad is taking an extremely abnormally long time to go pee. And I'm like, where the fuck is he? So I started to go look for him. I can't find him. And I'm like, what the fuck? I don't even know. So there was like this little like cart in the back. It was like a lemonade stand. And there was like a little, little like skinny, lanky, six foot tall, 25 year old acne covered face man with like a little apron on who was selling cold glass of lemonade. And that shit was fucking overpriced. I'm telling you, fucking, fucking five bucks for a glass of lemonade. Pfft, I can go to my backyard, pick some lemons and squeeze that for free. Fucking rip me off. Pfft. Anyway, didn't mean to get intense about that. But I got a lemonade because it was fucking hot and I was thirsty, um, which actually made it worse because lemonade, dehyd lemonade dehydrates you. My dad's nowhere to be seen. And I'm like, where the fuck is this man? So I'm just like, okay, whatever. I decide to go do my own thing. So I head off again. I'm walking past the sugarcane fields and there's like these tall reeds like above my head, like seven, eight feet tall. And they're just like speckled with locusts and gnats and flies. And it's just, the, it felt like I was suffocating, man. It was like the sugar aroma plus like the stickiness of the humidity was just disgusting. I was walking down the path that was kind of going to the middle, which was in the more like foresty area where there was like a bunch of like aspen, like oak trees and thorn bushes and scrubs and whatever. And there was nobody back there. There was like not a lot of people touring it or whatever, which was very weird that I thought because there was a lot of people up in the where the lemonade stand was. I do believe in the paranormal. I do believe that there is ghosts. I do believe you do go somewhere after you die. I don't necessarily believe you go to heaven or hell, but I do believe that your spirit or soul goes to some place. I don't know. Nobody knows what that is because nobody knows the answer to that. It's a it's the unknown, so to speak. I myself believe that our spirit goes somewhere. And I do believe if you were killed in a terrible accident, if you're murdered, especially back in historical times, a lot of people died of disease, murder, gunfights, ships, um, accidents, all that kind of stuff. They, Cause they didn't have the proper medicines and techniques that we have today. A lot of people died tragic deaths, especially like minors and like, especially African-American slaves, which was a lot of cruelty from their white masters and stuff like that with whips and torturing and anyway i'm not gonna get into that because that's that was awful so um i get i start getting further back there and i kind of like closed off against the rest of like the area or whatever and there's like a bunch of forest around me and there's like an open flowery meadow with like daisies before me and there was this old shack now i do believe that there are ghosts i do believe in ghosts i do believe that there is the paranormal i have gone up to black hawk recently with my girlfriend and her mom and I have done EVPs and we have gotten some stuff, which I have that on my channel. Go check that out right now. Long story short, I believe that ghosts exist. I believe that there is paranormal activity and that spirits do have some unfinished business on earth. And so that's why we see apparitions or hear things that we don't think is there, whatever. But the thing about paranormal is there is a lot, a lot more people I think today believe in it, but especially even just like 10 years ago, there's so many skeptics to the field of paranormal research because they just, you know, scientists are like, it's BS, like everything could be proven. And I'm like, not necessarily, nothing, nothing is impossible. Phenomena beyond our understanding on earth that are the dead, essentially. And we bump into them every once in a while, either not on purpose or not on purpose. From my understanding, a lot of people have died on his plantation. A lot of slaves died. A lot of people just passed away back then. So I was walking. I was having my, I'm holding my little lemonade. There was a narrow dirt path, like for like a carriage with horses to go on basically back then. And I was walking down it and all of a sudden, I'm, I'm just kind of staring at the ground. I'm on my phone looking at it or whatever. I just get this really weird feeling. Like just like, I feel super like, I wouldn't say uncomfortable, but very strange. Like I felt weird. Like, do you, know, do you know the feeling? It kind of like pins and needles on the back of your neck. And I look up and there is this, I'm not, I swear to you, this is true. I saw a figure and I, I don't think I've told this story fully. I've told it to my girlfriend, but not in full detail. There was a man standing maybe 50 yards from me, pretty close. And I couldn't make him out clear as day. And he was wearing an 1830s type outfit. He had a trench coat. He had a button-up vest that had no sleeves and he had a white collar shirt on with sleeves going down to here. 
and he had a hat on, like a, like a top hat. And he was white, and he had, he looked young, he maybe was my age at the time, maybe a little, in his early 20s. And we, we just locked eyes. And when I looked into his eyes, I felt sudden coldness. Just like, like I was just like shocked. Like I just felt so uncomfortable. I, like, I didn't feel like I was in like any danger, but I just felt like something was wrong. Like something wasn't right about this. And it seemed like the world around me, like the sounds of the locust buzzing and the, the forest and the, and the mumbling tourists behind me, it just faded until it was just silence. And it was, it was like I had no hearing. And it was just me and this dude. I, for a second, it took me a second to composure myself. I thought it was maybe like a reenactment or something like that. Or there was some type of stuff like that. Because I know at places like that, they do like reenactment for duels and stuff like that. But it didn't exactly feel like that. It felt a lot different. It felt like that it, it, he wasn't supposed to, he wasn't alive because I felt so cold, like my whole body just felt freezing in 90 degree weather. And he smiled at me and waved. And I just got a weird like wavelength feeling over my face. And I waved at him like this. And he nodded at me and went like that, walked to the shed that was ahead of me, that was like an old slave hut, and disappeared behind the doorway. I charged after him. And from the minute it took me to see him go in that doorway and run into the hut, maybe, eight seconds, eight, 10 seconds, he was nowhere to be seen, nowhere. And it was physically impossible for someone to disappear in that quick of time without me seeing them go somewhere else. And I immediately felt extreme sadness and I just started crying like in the, in the hut. After I got, you know, I got a hold of my emotions, I left, I finally found my dad and he was like, where the fuck have you been? And I tried to tell him about it. He didn't believe me because my dad's a skeptic. He doesn't believe in that stuff. And he's like, you're just seeing things because it's like you have, you're have you overheated or dehydrated or whatever because it's hot outside. And I'm like, whatever, dad. That has stuck with me for a long time since that happened to this day. I, I do think about it sometimes. It comes up in my mind. Um, but it just felt weird. Like I, I know for a fact when I was leaving, I felt, I was thought about it for a while and I was unsure about it for a, a good couple months, but then I knew for a fact that he was a, he was a ghost that I think I saw a white plantation worker or who had worked on the plantation during Andrew Jackson's time. And we had just crossed paths in the ethereal plane or whatever. And I don't think he meant any harm. I just think he was giving me a friendly greeting and saying, Hey man, and I don't know if he realized that it was a different time. I don't know if he thought that it was, he probably thought I looked weird because I was wearing, you know, not that, I was wearing modern clothing. But he probably didn't understand why he was seeing me. But I don't know, man. It was crazy. Ooh.